Hey everyone, it's me, Coral. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here to do the trope video that I meant to do in July. I just, my plate was very full. Um, and so here I am doing it. So here I am in August doing it here today. Uh, this trope video is about books that have to do with music horror books that have to do with music and actually there are probably like three or four more books that I have on my shelves that I could have used for this very trope so like maybe I'll have to do a part two at some point um it was it was fun to pick sometimes it's like I'm only able to find four because I like to do four you know for these videos but this one was very plentiful so, which one should I start with? Like, I didn't like most of these books here this time, which I hate when that happens. It makes it, uh, like, less fun to do when I'm like, rah, rah, rah. so I think, what am I gonna do? I don't know. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna save the best for last is what I'm gonna do. Um, okay, so, first I would like to talk to you about this little cute promo book called Shock Rock and this is an anthology about the new sound of horror and um yeah this one was like it wasn't bad most anthologies I read they're just like weren't enough good stories to like really make me like this like there were some good stories in here Oh, this sounds all crickety. I really liked, there was one called Bob Dylan, Troy Johnson, and the Speed Queen by F. Paul Wilson, which was fun. There was one called Groupies by Richard Matheson, which I liked. And then, what was that other one? I can't, ah, it was called Requiem by Brian Hodge. I think that was my favorite one in this story. So, I mean, being that this is an anthology, I can't give you a very good summary, but I know that there is this one, obviously, and I think there was actually a second anthology that they did, like a shock rock number two. And um, all of these were really centered around, um, there were actually, I was surprised with like the variety of the music in this one, because there was like some doo-wop stuff. There was like heavy metal. There was more like Jimi Hendrix kind of stuff. Um, classic rock, kind of like psychedelic rock, I guess. Um, so, it like even within the genre, I guess, of rock music, they really had a great variation. It wasn't like reading the same story over and over again, which was nice in an anthology. That's really important, I feel like, um, for a themed anthology, you know what I mean? So. This one, just average. I think, uh, like I said, there were some stories that I liked and some that were just like kind of weird and like not good. If you like anthologies, like it doesn't hurt to check it out, I guess. All right, the next three, next three I have here are more modern, which um, I try to usually do two of each, two like vintage horror and two like uh, more recent horror, but this one just worked out to be three more modern horror books. So next I want to tell you about The Sorrows by Jonathan Jans, and this is one that I actually um, got an ARC copy of a couple years ago and then ended up picking up the, like a printed copy of it because I like to have the books that I've read, especially like even ARCs if I don't really like them. Um, I feel like because I got something for free, because I got this free experience, I'd like to help support the author even if I didn't necessarily like the book. The Sorrows was kind of different than the other books I read because it definitely, it dealt with like a different kind of music because in this there are two characters, Ben and Eddie, and they compose music for movies. Like they write scores, which is obviously much different than like being in a band, which is what my other three books basically were about. Ben and Eddie. Ben and Eddie. Uh, they just um, are like coasting off the high of having an Oscar nomination and they get hired to do the score for a horror movie, but Ben, who is like kind of the mastermind behind their music, 
is really having kind of a creative drought right now because he's dealing with uh, a divorce and like not seeing his son and stuff like that. So he's uh, really just having a bad time. So what happens is they get the opportunity to go to this like old weird like castle mansion on an island. It's called the Sorrows and it's called the Sorrows because this crazy murder happened there in the 1920s. So they're thinking that they can take inspiration from this like kind of spooky place and uh you know kind of be away be away from everything and write this movie. So I mean that's really what this is about. There are some supernatural things that happen in this and it's kind of fun because like there is this supernatural like entity that is kind of coming for them and then there's like a more human entity that's kind of coming for them and it really like culminates in this really messy end really is what um I thought of it it was just like there's so many there's just so many bad things like about to happen at these to these characters there's like this culmination at the end and it just felt very messy there were some cool parts to this i like i don't know i i feel like i say the same thing whenever i'm talking about jonathan jans's books and that's like they just seem really slow paced for the and it's weird because they are like they feel equally slow to me and really action-packed at the same time. He is really good at writing action sequences. All of his books feel very cinematic when I read them, but I don't end up liking them a whole ton. And I know that he is kind of like a darling of modern horror, and this isn't anything personal, of course, because I know so many people love his books. But man, I don't know. There's just something about them. They're just like, they feel very slow to me. They feel very sluggish, even though that even though they have this really good like action element to them. Like it's very physical movement horror, you know what I mean? Um, so all in all, thought this was not super good. I gave this two and a half stars. This is one of his earlier works though. Flame Tree Press did like pick it up and reprint it in 2018 but i believe it was previously published before that i'm pretty sure i don't know look it up i guess i don't fucking know um so that was the sorrows it was a little interesting because i i mean i've never read anything where the characters are trying to write a score for a movie that's cool but uh i don't know just didn't pan out for me next i read black mad wheel by josh mallerman Maybe I should be telling you when these are published, but this one, let me see. This came out after Bird Box. This was published in 2017. At least I'm pretty sure it was after Bird Box. But this one was kind of interesting. The premise was kind of interesting because it's about, it takes place after, oh crap, is it, what war was it? Crap, crap, crap. Was it Vietnam? I keep not finding the information I'm looking for in the fucking internet, but I believe that this- th I don't think that this is World War II. I think it might have been Vietnam, um, but it could be totally wrong. I don't really think that's super integral to the part of the story- or to, uh, the point of the story. I guess what's it just important is that all of these characters had been in the army after they've served their time in the army uh, they get together and they make a music group known as the Danes. They've had some good luck as a group and they've had like one hit and they're just kind of holding out on that fame um, and not really able to replicate that. Like they, they're, they're kind of like not coming up with any good material since their number one hit. They're kind of down on their luck and then suddenly the US Army comes to them again and asks them to investigate, to get to the bottom of this strange occurrence that keeps happening in the deserts of Africa. Uh, and what's happening is that there is this strange sound that's basically like disarming any sort of weapon, like even nuclear weapons. It's making them obsolete and 
obviously the army wants to know why because probably they want to get a hold of this technology and they don't want this technology used against them so they ask the danes to do this because they are all former army men and i don't know no shit about music so the danes agree to do this and part of the story is told um from before this event happens you know uh, you get the introduction and all that stuff and some of the story is told after the event which is kind of interesting so it really like you know kind of the resolution of the event but you don't really know what happened which makes it you know intriguing like i don't know really what else to tell you guys without giving some anything away uh but this book does match my wall pretty good doesn't it anyways that has nothing to do with this story um so i felt about this book that it was I don't know kind of confusing uh none of the characters were very memorable to me memorable to me i probably couldn't tell you a single person um like the name of a single person i only know philip tonka is the main character because i was reviewing the synopsis trying to find out what fucking were these guys served in uh and it didn't even matter so anyways so the conflict in this you know they're trying to get to the bottom of what the sound is and kind of like what happens in there is just so bizarre and i don't like i don't really need to understand things in a book to like it you know what i mean like there are plenty of endings that are very ambiguous um that i've really enjoyed and i don't need i don't need the author to spoon feed it to me but like really with this i was like what in the fuck it's just so bizarre and like i don't know i don't even know it's like bizarre and like not a fun way i guess so i didn't end up liking black mad wheel very much i'm not even sure why it's called black mad wheel i like the time period that this took place in and I liked hearing the music stuff about this you know group the Danes and all that but it was like once they got into the desert I just was really confused um I did however also like the after part you know where you know what's happened but you don't know why that has happened I did like that part um one of the characters is in the hospital I can tell you that because I just double check and that's in the synopsis so I know that's not a spoiler. So it was like inter really interesting. It's like why is this guy in here but I don't know. Like the middle part, the middle of all that, you know, why Philip Tonka ended up in the hospital is like not super exciting to me. So there's that. I don't know. Some people did like it, obviously. I'm not saying don't ever read this book. I'm just letting you know how I felt about it. Okay, last book up on the docket probably knew I was gonna talk about this one. This is We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. This came out in 2018 and this is, I don't know, I can't say it. I can't say this is my favorite favorite Grady Hendrix book because I love them all. Um, but this one is like about heavy metal and oh boy. Okay, so our main character, Chris, she was in a band and she was kind of like the creative juice for this band. Like she came up with a lot of the lyrics and stuff like that. Um, and she was not the front man, but she was one of the guitarists. And her band, what was it called? I'm sorry, Dirtwork, that's right. So her band Dirtwork, their band Dirtwork is just about to hit it big. They're just about to sign this contract that will really just push them into stardom and something happens and she doesn't really remember what so now it's like years and years later she's in her 40s and she is a hotel clerk in the small town that she grew up in so obviously she's not like thriving and she doesn't feel very passionately about life and she can't even really play the guitar anymore because there, she has all these like legal clauses um with the 
dude who was the singer in their group because he's kind of silenced all the group members they can't make any more music and stuff like that um but he's gone on to be a rock god and like is still currently a rock god and uh she feels kind of bitter about it and finally she decides that she needs to talk to them like she just wants to be able to make music on her own again not as dirt work or anything she just wants to make music as Chris. so she goes to one of her other bandmates who she hasn't spoken to in a long time and like some crazy shit happens and he tells her some stuff and now she's wondering like what exactly happened that night that we were supposed to sign this contract and why are all these weird things happening now all of a sudden and maybe the former singer terry isn't a rock god necessarily because he deserved it like maybe he made a pact of some sort and then things go on from there this is really such a wild ride i loved everything about this book um it really like uh i've talked about this before when i've talked about this book but this is like the music I grew up listening to. Like these were my parents. Like she's the same age as my mom when I read this book. And so it really, I don't know, it held a special place in my heart because it made me feel very nostalgic and made me need to break out a lot of records. And I wish that Dirtwork was a real group so I could listen to them. It's like the nerdiest fucking heavy metal, you know, like, you know like rush like listening to their lyrics it's like just so it's like a story they're telling you and it's so much fun and it's exciting you know what i mean um so maybe people who didn't listen to this kind of music wouldn't have the same opinion uh of this book but i really loved it i loved chris as a character um, it went some really bizarre ways and I really liked what Grady Hendrix did. It is so surprising to me hearing his interviews about this book and like knowing that he doesn't really listen to this music. It's like how does he, he just like embodies these people so well in all of his books really. Like I don't know how he does it. He just does it so good. So this is We Sold Our Souls. This is the best music book I read of the bunch. But you know what? I might have to do a part two of this and read some of the other ones I have sitting on my shelf. Uh, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. My next trope video will be in October. And I'm planning on doing books that have similar looking covers i guess i know i've talked about it before um but i don't have any of the books here to show you so i'll just tell you they have similar looking covers and it's interesting they're not all gonna have the same content really or like the same uh plot line or plot device or anything like that so it's gonna be a little bit different uh so look for that in october i'm doing a giveaway go look on my youtube channel and uh look for my giveaway video because i hit 1000 subscribers which is fucking wild so uh watch that video if you'd like to enter and um that video will tell you everything you need to know my battery is running out so i need to wrap this up thank you guys so much for watching i will see you guys later goodbye